Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Discipline Before Dishonor, where Prometheans like us embrace our mountains and withstand within, confronting discomforting perditions with distinction because we love challenge and triumph. Today, we're going to be playing Survival Fountain of Youth. Now, I think I played this game when it came out back in April. Um, I started on the hardest difficulty, I never played it on an easier one, and it's permadeath, so your first fuck up is your, uh, you know, the end of your playthrough. But this game is extraordinary. I love it. I think it's a, it's a really underrated shining gem in the survival crafting genre right now. And I'm really excited to show it off, especially since there was a new update for it yesterday, introducing several new regions and mechanics and features and animals. So I'm very excited to hop in here and see what's what. We're gonna get rid of my old world and we're gonna start a new one. Alright, skip intro and tutorial. You guys don't need to see the intro, but I will watch the cutscenes with you at least, you know? The intro and tutorial is more like walking through the ship and learning how to pick up an item, bullshit like that, right? So, so survival mode. Iron Man. You get one faint. You don't even get to revive. Like, you faint, and that's the end of your playthrough. And we're gonna go on very hard difficulty, making everything... As hard as it could possibly be, obviously. Alright, here we go. So we're on the boat. We're looking at the map. And shit gets fucked. He just got subnautica items in that chest on lower difficulties. We found numerous traces of- you know what, maybe later. We are on a, sh on a boat that's burning up, so... <laughs> All right. Let's get the hell out the of here. The storm came out of nowhere. None of us were ready for it. Strong winds and giant waves blew up in a split second and crashed into the ship. The sails were torn apart and the ship slammed into the reefs. The sailors jumped from their bunks and tried to save the ship. But it was too late. I came to my senses on the sandy shore. My memories were gone. I could not even remember my name. But I was alive, and hoped that at least one of my fellow crew members had also escaped. Okay, just a brief summary of the story. We are part of an expedition led by Juan Ponce de Leon to find the Fountain of Youth for Immortality. That's kind of the premise of the game. But everything goes to hell in a handbasket, obviously. Right. Okay. So, as you pick up items, you unlock blueprints for those items. Allowing you to craft whatever they're components of. Also, you might have noticed, top left corner, sun meter, filling up. That is your sunstroke. You have to kind of stick to the shade. You could, you could liken it to the long dark, how you have to avoid the wind, right? While traveling, by hugging walls and shit. Same type of thing here, you're going to want to try to stick to the shadows and avoid those sun rays as often as possible. But there are ways and means that you have available to you of reducing the intensity of the sun's rays on you. We're going to collect these shells because they're a good source of food and water in the early game. That apple's going to come in handy. Let's try to be quick about this. So usually when I first spawn in, I do a circle around this beach here. Gathering whatever I can find that isn't tied down, you know, a whole bunch of mollusks, a whole bunch of sticks, a whole bunch of leaves. You can get a large stone over there that you can use to craft your first tools. Alright. Alright. 
All right, we are officially encumbered. We're going to drop that for a second. We should get to the shade before we craft with that. All right, you know what? Let's just walk it over here. There's a lot of shade over here. We'll be able to do what crafting we have to do without worrying about getting heat stroke. Okay, and there's another box there I can search for more food. We should be good here. So, blueprints, F. I need the stone knife here. Except you get, uh, you get four of these stones. There we go. So now that I have the stones, I can make a stone knife, I think. Yeah, stone cutter. Alright, we're gonna make one. As you can see, our sun meter has gone down a little bit. Alright. It does get dark in here. Now, around these areas, you're gonna have to be careful. There are snakes and shit. Kinda like, uh, green hell. You know? You have to avoid walking into them. I shouldn't grab too much of that tobacco. Yeah, we're already encumbered. Shit. Alright. Maybe we will weigh less if we craft an axe. I might not want to craft it here. We'll see. I'm not sure if I can get attacked by a scorpion while I'm crafting it. Alright, there we go. We are now mobile again, at least a little bit. Oh, and a good way to lose weight is to process your drinking coconut. It shaves a lot of the weight off of it. Alright, we'll take that. First thing we're going to want to do is craft a backpack. Which is a pretty easy thing to do. You just need long sticks, pretty much. And banana leaves, which we will have. Okay, you're gonna need that chamomile. Now, this can be tricky. You're not guaranteed to have shade as the sun continues moving. Best to harvest one stick at a time. Keep it safe. Now, in order to craft that backpack, we're gonna need banana leaves and two of these sticks. Alright. We'll leave the sticks here and come back with the banana leaves. Over there. Alright. May as well eat those now. Okay. Let's grab one more batch of chamomile. Alright. Once we craft this backpack, it's going to be a hell of a lot easier to get around. Now the sun's on that side of the tree. I can stand over here now. Here's that portable box. Craft. All right, beautiful. We now have much larger storage capacity. So, we are going to gather necessary things and then go to where we're going to be living. All right. I'd like to get some hibiscus petals if I can, maybe some rope. We're going to have a lot of crafting to do in the early game here. Prairie dog. Let's watch out for snakes. Alright. Got some hibiscus. More banana leaves. Not that much inventory left. Okay.
Oh, it's raining hard right now. There's no fruit on those trees. Those ones have fruit. Prairie dog. Alright, let's take those. That. Let's make sure we can run away. Oh! Ah, son of a bitch. Alright, let's grab that. And... Oh, my God. Okay. Hey, we didn't get injured, and the sun's not beating down on us anymore, at least. Alright. We've almost got a full belly. We're gonna need it to rest tonight. I wonder how much daylight we have left. Damn it, he's like camping the tree. Yeah, you like that? Alright, let's go. Before I take more damage and get more, uh... I don't want to get a wound yet. The game is hard, you know, but it's extremely fun. And I promise, this is going to be a long one. It's not easy for the game to kill me. Alright. Let's get to that cave where we're going to be living. I wonder if there's something I could craft in order to alleviate my inventory burden. I'll definitely need a fire starter. Yeah. Alright, you know what? We'll, we'll just save those wide leaves for later. For now, let's get to the cave and then we can deposit everything. Alright, take a look at the top left corner of the screen. As you can see, it is dark, so I now have a significantly higher chance of injury when performing actions. Everything I've done up until this point, like uh, harvesting the long sticks from the tree, or crafting, I had a 3% chance of getting injured while doing it. Now, however, I have a 33% chance of being injured while doing it. However, you will be happy to discover, most likely, that you can build a leaf bed, at least, without getting injured. It doesn't have a chance to injure you. Just watch out for the scorpions in here. I'm gonna unequip this. Why waste the durability of my tools, right? Okay. Those are yellow leaves. I can't use those. Let's craft our bed. Somewhere where the scorpions are less likely to get me. Alright. We'll need two more leaves. Beautiful. Once we kill this third one, we'll pretty much be safe here. Let's drop those. Alright. We are more or less safe now. Our captain, Juan Ponce de Leon, also survived the shipwreck. Sea currents brought him to this same island just a bit earlier before my awakening. He located the grotto and made it his temporary shelter. Then he started to act quickly and decisively. After building up the temporary camp, the captain began to explore the island. He named it the Island of Hope. During another trip, he heard distant cannon shots. It was a signal from one of our ships. The captain left this note, then hurriedly packed up and sailed toward the sound of the cannon fire. He was in a rush to help his crew. Running quickly, he forgot his spyglass on the other side of the island. If I find it, 
I will be able to look around the island. Okay, so we have to locate his spyglass. We'll read the- we're gonna read these when it's no longer raining and I no longer have to compete with that audio. Living water. Alright, and this is a map, so water. This is where I am. Water is down here and up there. Alright, let's get some sleep. Well, since we don't have to worry about the scorpions anymore. Alright. At least not until they respawn. Alright. Now, we're gonna read those notes before we go to sleep. Since the rain stopped, we may as well. Journal. I'm gonna scroll through these, and if you guys want to read them, you can pause, okay? So starting from the top. Okay, there you go, guys. Oh, you can also read this. You saw that. And you saw that. Okay, so now, it's everything else. There's a really nice hints section here that can help you learn the mechanics of the game. Take advantage of this if you try it for the first time. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna want to rest, and then there's a nearby potion that you're not supposed to know about that I do, and I would like to go get it. We will in the morning, so I can't get health back because I'm soaked. Okay. 20% chance of ignition. Nice. Okay, we'll dry off. We should make some bandages, but we just don't quite have the materials yet. Alright. Storage. to the stones in case we have to make a new cutter. Ah, we can find them. This'll do. And then, first thing tomorrow, we're gonna go grab that snake potion, and we're going to start crafting a healthy amount of bandages. I may as well drink this living water now to get my maximum health. You know what? I'll drink it tomorrow. Alright. Let's get some sleep. Food is less than 85, so I can't get health back. Ugh, 48% chance of injury. That's not worth it. Alright, we're just gonna sleep. We're not gonna worry about it. Alright, there. Now we'll drink the living water. Deposit these. And I'm going to show you guys how to really get a good advantage in that early game here. Okay. So we're leaving home behind for now. I'm going to leave coconuts in clusters. They're very heavy. You really can't carry too many of them on a trip, but... I'll gather them all together, at least. Create little piles between my cave and where I'm going. Graphically, the game isn't perfect yet. 
right? There's uh, there's limitations in the game in regards to the fidelity, right? The graphics, the you know, but it's it's still beautiful. It's nice. This is pretty, right? It don't look too bad. There it is. That's the site of the snake potion over there. It's a special brew that temporarily freezes your thirst, hunger. Oh, look at that. Vivacity. Chance of injury minus 25%. How useful is that? And that is just for being well rested, it seems. Getting dark now. There's a skill point right there. Get to spend our first one. Alright, let's grab the snake potion. It'll really help. Right around the back here, you're gonna see a whole bunch of skeletons. Right down here in the center is a beautiful brew. Providing a 24 hour pause to your food, water, and sleep deterioration. So it's literally 24 hours where you don't have survival needs. Now, obviously, those potions, they're extraordinarily rare. There's only two on this island, and I know where to find them both. That's, you know, they're extremely useful. Extremely. Survival points obtained. So you can spend points on your character. Uh, you know, concentration, resist diseases. Each rank provides different benefits to you. Very useful. I'm gonna unlock concentration mode, I think. Unless, uh... These are really useful. Uh, you get a food and water bonus when you consume things. So I think I'm going to start with those, and then I'm going to go into concentration. That's usually what I do, just to give myself that little edge over the early game food and water struggle. Now, can I... I definitely can't carry that rock. I mean, we're pretty much full up as it is. We will consume this potion now. We have 24 hours to get things done. And although it's dark, um, we are going to have the entire span of tomorrow's daylight to not worry about our meters. And even though it's dark and we have a boosted chance of injury when performing actions, I still have vivacity. In fact, that vivacity is not going away. I get to pretty much keep that for the next 24 hours, so... I'm a mile. If you want to give yourself a very easy time getting started, then I would recommend that the first thing you do is actually go for that snake potion. And then after that, you have all the freedom you need to gather the supplies you require to make bandages that will keep you alive. See, this game works kind of along the same vein that Green Hell does, where there's different medicines and bandages for different types of wounds and ailments. Sunburn, flu, physical wounds, right? There's a, there's a variety of several different ailments that you can suffer, requiring a variety of several different medicines to treat. So what you want to do is always make sure that you have an abundance of, of those bandages on hand, because if you don't treat the lower stages of those diseases, they can progress to worse stages, eventually becoming fatal. And what you really don't want to happen is to have a shitload of injuries and problems like, like two stacks of scorpion venom, plus two stacks of wounds, right? You want to try to keep your character healthy, keep those injuries gone. I really love the mechanics in this game. They are so rich, so kind of refreshing and new, right? It's it's not the same tired stuff. All right, so let's place all in the box. 
we're gonna stack the coconuts in a pile around here. Right here. We're gonna put the edible ones right there. And the drinkable ones right there. Beautiful. What do we get for this, huh? A bone? That's not too bad, actually. But I don't want to get injured if I can avoid it, so... I'm just gonna quickly wrap up here. And then we have to go gather supplies for additional bandages and medicine. Alright. So. First thing you need to know is that you actually craft medicine at the campfire. As you can see, these are all of your medicines. Chamomile juice to help with indigestion. Tobacco compressed to help with burns. Uh, somehow using scorpion venom to treat wounds containing scorpion venom. <laughs> Hibiscus petals for flu, right? And then you have the steam leafed bandage. This is expensive. Those wide leaves are extraordinarily valuable. And uh, these bandages just give you health back. Now they all do. They give you a little bit of health, but this one is a bulk health bandage. That's the one that you'd use if you're really hurt and you want to get some health back for a little bit. Now, the important thing for me to do at this moment in time is to craft a torch. Because with the torch, you have a significantly easier time lighting a fire. I do have an 8% chance for injury, so I'm not going to craft it yet. What I will do with this time that I have available to me is I will do tasks that do not injure me that will... Help me to get ahead. So we're going to grab as many of these narrow leaves as we possibly can. One of the first priorities that I have is to craft myself leaf armor. Because that leaf armor is going to block a lot of the sunlight and allow me to be more mobile throughout the day without worrying about shaded areas. Only problem is, it costs a lot of narrow leaves and wide leaves, like banana leaves, in order to craft it, so... We got some shit to do today. But, by the time the sun is out, we might have that armor. We're only about halfway through the night, so. 34 narrow leaves. We'll disassemble that later. Over there, where, where you first start the playthrough, where we spawned in, if you go in the water, you can find starfish there to eat, and they're a pretty good food item. You can't find that many starfishes, mind you, but it's still food. A last resort for the desperate. So on this trip out, our primary goal is to find a whole lot of wide leaves, but the only issue with that is wide leaves tend to be in very dangerous areas in abundance. So, if you really want wide leaves, you have to head that way into the jungle, but in the jungle you have a chance of being ambushed while you're working by scorpions. They can just appear on your arm and insert or fucking ass jab you, you know? They jab you with their ass. I don't know what the term for that is. Sting? Right, sting. Yeah, they, they sting you. They ass jab you with their stinger. We're going to edit all of that out. Don't worry about it. Or will we? Alright, let's go. We have plenty of mollusks that we can eat during desperate times. I try my very best to never eat them. Because they don't deteriorate. You have this food for as long as you don't eat it. It doesn't spoil, so... It's because you don't actually kill the mollusk inside the shell until you decide to take it out. All right, we're gonna gather lots of these. The sun is gonna be rising soon. Look at that, eh? That's gorgeous. Sage flowers, utilized for combating fever if you allow your diseases to progress too far. We might actually wanna go over there and grab the rest of those long sticks. Let's grab this chamomile first, though. And then we'll return here to where we are and go down the hill because I think there's more banana leaves down there. 8% chance of injury. It's bad, but not that bad. You know what I mean? Alright, so we already have all of these long sticks. Now, there can be snakes kind of on the outer edge of this forest. 
you have to watch your step once you get to about here, because you might you might actually end up stepping on one, and it's pretty shitty when it happens. There's a skill point just down the way. Oh my god. And I'm going to get that skill point. While I'm here looking for medicine. You stay away from me, prairie dog. I'll fuck you up. I'm going to cut you. Just watch out for snakes at the moment. We're going to need rope. But I don't want to really... I don't want to try to get the rope until I've produced anti-venom bandages. Or at least until I have an abundance of wide leaves. The thing with the snakes in this game is that once you're in their bite range, you can't get out of it. So if you hear... Like, if they attack, you're gonna get hit, even if you're visibly far outside of the range of their bite. It's kind of like once you trigger their attack, you're gonna receive it, no matter what you do. Even if you jump, even if you sprint and jump out of the way, like, you're still gonna take that bite. So you have to see them before they lunge at you. Oh, you can get a lot of wide leaves from those. I don't want to. Because scorpions can crawl on my arm, but it's too lucrative. Look at that. Four of them. I need that. Alright, good. We didn't end up paying for it. There's a rope tree right there. But rope is heavy. And we have to come back for that rope when... Ooh. Group. Well, we're getting a little full up here. Alright, let's drop one of those. Alright, I think we're good for the snake now. There, you see that shimmer off in the distance? Objects like that often give you skill points. So the more of them you can find, the, the more you can expediate the strengthening of your character. Survival point obtained. Alright, so we're going to put this one into all food, providing a plus five food bonus when consumed. Extraordinarily useful. There's another rope tree up there. Alright. So, if you're, uh, you know, if you're down here, you're wanting to get back to our cave, you see that funky-ass little cliff right there? They got that rock standing on it somehow. That's basically where the grotto is. That's the grotto. So, uh, you know, just go there. It's on the other side, of course, on the edge of the water by the beach, but that's your waypoint home. There's a little shortcut right there to get back. However, it's guarded by a snake. So, uh, you know, just tread lightly. Doesn't seem as though the sun's high enough yet to be causing me burning. Now, where the hell is this snake? There's always one here. Hear that shit? Right there. There's the motherfucker right there. So I think we can skate around him here. Oh my god, that was way too close. Alright. Now we're going to want to utilize the daylight to accomplish some serious crafting. We still have vivacity, so now that it's daylight, we have a 0% chance of injury. It's the right time to do everything we have to do. I'll tell you one thing, it was way harder for me to survive before I knew about those snake potions. Oh, those were the days. Made me so happy. I belong in that place of torment and challenge, I really do. What the hell? I, I suppose that's the uh, over-encumbered noise, huh? Alright. So, to get started, we're going to craft ourselves some leaf armor. We're going to require that in order to keep ourselves cool under the sunlight. God, that sounds like it's killing me. Here, wait. Heavy overload. Alright, so there's no actual health 
deficit to that. It's just... Alright. Hat. Ape. Skirt. And sandals. There we go. We have a full kit. We are good. Now, can I craft a... My first belt. I need a workbench in order to do so. So, the next mission is gathering a shitload of rope, I believe. We're gonna stack these leaves on the ground. That's what I usually do. Alright. This will drop. The other one. We should probably craft bandages first before we go get rope. That sounds like a smart idea. We're gonna craft a torch as well. It's kind of invaluable for starting fires. When I first played this game, you could not use a torch to repel scorpions, but now you can. It, uh, you know, it's pretty useful. Alright, let's get this fire started. So, that... Uh, you can't get injured when you're starting a fire on the torch, but you can get injured when you're starting a fire on the campfire. So if you light the torch, then the campfire, there's zero chance of injury, even when you don't have vivacity, right? And if you use the torch to light the fire, there's a 100% chance of success. And then middle mouse button to extinguish your torch. All right. Let's craft some bandages. Whatever we can. With what we have. These ones are pretty expensive. Alright, we'll do the... Definitely Venom first. Tobacco's not really necessary, because that's only for burns, and I just made the leaf suit. So we'll make uh, two Venom bandages... One for food poisoning, one for flu, and then we're going to need just regular bandages. Nice! They actually tell you when there's not enough fuel in the fire to finish anymore. It used to be that if you tried to craft it and there wasn't enough fuel, it would just extinguish. That's great. I like that change a lot. That's wonderful. These devs are not stupid, man. They're... I don't know. They, they love the game. You can tell. They've even responded to me on forums when I had uh, issues or... It was a minor grievance. I fucking told them I loved the game. And I told them that my only gripe with it was the volume of the cicadas on Copper Island. <laughs> but yeah, you know, a dev actually said like, Hey, you know what? We'll take a look at that. Even if they don't take a look at it, it's the thought that counts. You know what I mean? I appreciate that kind of shit. Thank you for stopping by. That's my view on it. Now, it's an insignificant amount of weight, but I'm going to leave the fire starter behind because I don't want... I want to be able to maximize my carry capacity. Alright. There is a way out in the back of the cave there, but there's a whole bunch of scorpions, and I just... I don't want to kill them right now. Right? We have the snake potion, and we need to gather a whole bunch of uh, rope. While we have the snake potion, and while we have vivacity. I might make that the word of the day for this episode. <laughs> vivacity. <laughs> I am unma unmatched in my... What, what the hell does he say? Perspicacity and indefatigability in all realms of human endeavor. Oh my god. Alright. Fuck off, dog. You stay there. Don't tread on me. Look at that. Wound and poisoning decrease chance. So that's going to really come in handy. See, my first couple of playthroughs, I didn't even... I, uh... I didn't know how useful the leaf armor was, right? So... Just getting less wounds when you get attacked or when you get stung, that's amazing. But also being resistant to sunlight, that's incredible. I mean, the sunlight was the worst part, right? You're constantly shadow skipping. You, you want to get from shaded area to shaded area. 
and it made it really tedious. So I would say your first priority is like backpack, armor, and bandages. Like those are the three things that get you ready for the rest. Okay, well, there's a rope tree right there. We can grab all that. And we'll get wide leaves with the rest of our inventory space. Alright. That's a good amount. Gonna destroy our entire axe, but... Okay. I... Yeah, sure, let's repair it. We need a stone, but we can get one over here. We'll grab these wide leaves on the way. Backo. More wide leaves. Okay. The ball's rolling now. Everything's going smooth as silk. Now, I would like to get more rope, though. So I'm hoping I have enough daylight left to visit that other rope tree and repair my axe before doing so. You have to be careful at that rope tree over there, though, because there is a predatory boar that ro roams the area. You have to try to avoid him. If you got a stone spear, you can kill him. But, you know, he is more dangerous than your run-of-the-mill creature at this stage of the game. Alright. Axe is repaired. Drag that back down to the belt. I think we have a little bit of daylight left. Yeah, we do. Let's try to get to that rope tree before we lose it. If we see the boar, though, we gotta bounce. Oh, oh, there he is. Now, he's aware of me. If, if he loses sight of me or, like, forgets about me, then sure, but I can't really take that risk. Grab that. It looks like his attention may be partially diverted. Let's try. Oh, we've been attacked by a pest. As you can see, I didn't get envenomed there, though. Kill it. Grab it. Alright, despite our chance of injury, we were able to get the rest of the rope. Let's grab whatever of these we can- Oh my god. Screw that. Grab that. As you can see, the jungle is an extraordinarily lucrative place, but you have to be very wary of the additional threats that roam the area. I'm gonna want to clear these bushes, I think, so I can get through, like, this bush right here. Uh, let's grab the sticks out of it first, and then we'll get rid of the bush itself. That way we can get through here without getting prickled and losing health. Because those, those prickly stick bushes, they do, they, they cause you some harm. They might not wound you, but they'll take away your health. Damn, tobacco leaves weigh a lot more than I thought. Look at that, 0 0.5 per leaf. That's crazy. I thought they'd be like 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Now, one thing I need to warn you guys about is that this snake, he's not always in the same place. Sometimes he's on the left side, sometimes he's on the right side. You see that? Now he's on the other side from where he was before. So we just do our best to avoid contact and we get through there. It's gonna be time to kill that turtle down the hill pretty soon. We're just about at the workbench stage of the game. Look at that, 17 liana. That translates to 17 ropes, so we're, we're doing pretty good. We got great use out of that snake potion. I'm very happy with the state of our progression. Staying alive in this game is not tremendously difficult, but I, I find that it's so much easier to die when you don't understand the game's mechanics fully. Once you learn everything about it, I, well, I, I suppose that's just the way life works, right, with everything, but... This game is very hard at first. On permadeath? Oh, buddy. Like, it's, it's quite a learning curve. It's more like a learning mountain. Like a very steep drop. Well, we have a lot of those. We'll also stack these outside the boxes. Okay, we've got a nice pile of wide leaves over there. Big pile of narrow leaves. 
And so far, we still only require the one box. Alright, we're gonna need an equal amount of narrow leaves. See, they go quick. <laughs> Alright, let's get some sleep. We need daylight, I believe. Ugh. Well, you know what? If we rest for two hours, then I think I'll have vivacity, and I can take the risk of crafting these. Oh, there we go. Alright, first injury. Right, I don't want to deposit my bandages. Let's keep those. Alright, so we've treated the wound. Let's, uh, maybe, maybe we'll start a fire, you know? that. You actually get fire starting experience every time you fail to light the torch, which is pretty cool. It's, you know. Yeah. Alright. So we have the fire now. Maybe I should craft more bandages while I still can. Alright, three more steamed leaf bandages. Alright, let's check our inventory. So five, I'd like to have three of each of these and five of the steamed leaf bandage. And just to make sure we have it when we need it, we'll make, uh... Because there's some times where, like, your armor will break while you're out. So you want to have at least some sunburn cure, you know? That should do. Not enough fuel. take a look at the inventory now. I would like to make eucalyptus bandages if I can. They're really good for health restoration when you need it, and we're gonna have to think about eating soon. Oh, we can only make one. Not enough fuel. You know what, we'll just we'll leave that the way it is. Ignite by fire. Well, I didn't know you could do that. That's pretty cool. Alright. I mean, I know you couldn't do that in the past, but it looks like they added it. I'm telling you, these devs, they're not... They don't suck. <laughs> Alright, um... I'll craft a spear to start. So that we can hunt some food. Stone spear. But you need a workbench to craft it. We'll just do a wooden one for now. All right, let's go get some food. We are getting hungry. So, combat. Uh, there's two things you can do. Right click. If you right click, then you block and throw them away. If you hold left click and attack them right before they attack you, that's a blocking hit. And it actually protects you from damage. While dealing extra damage to them. All right. It's one crab. That's another. I mean, our belly is empty right now, so I feel like maybe one more prairie dog. Oh my god, you crafty little devil. I'd tame you for that if I could. Fucking genius. Oh my god! Alright, let's get some stamina back. All 
All right. Got him. All right, we should have more than enough food now. So I'm going to go home. All right, home sweet home. We're going to have to craft a new axe, but I'm probably going to want a better one. Now, we need food. Beautiful. And beautiful. Alright. Two of those will take 40 minutes. And two of those, another hour. Beautiful. Okay, let's extinguish the fire. And fill our damn belly. Stomach ache. Half a mile. Alright. Alright. So, we'll put those in here. Fire starter is repaired. We're going to need a new axe, but I'd like to craft a workbench. Let's see. It requires rope, small stick, and long stick, which we can do. But let's get all these ropes crafted. I've been putting it off for too long. Okay. Now, we're going to need a drink pretty soon. But we're doing okay on the green coconuts. Let's crack a couple of those. No chance of injury, that's that's good. Beautiful. Alright, sleep till morning. Finish crafting the damn ropes. Okay, 17 ropes. 18, that's beautiful. We'll put this workbench right over here. But we need an axe in order to craft it, sadly. Stone axe blade. Oof, I would like to have one of those better axes, but they're very expensive to create. For now. We'll just do the shitty axes. Okay, we got a workbench now. We can craft a stone Ooh. spear. Get rid of this wooden one. Gonna need a long stick. I'd like a Liana belt. 18% chance of injury. We are quite tired. Okay. Yeah, we'll just do that. I'm gonna want to visit the watering hole soon, make some... Make some canteens to store liquid. Okay. So, we got a third tool belt slot now. I think I'd like to take care of the scorpions in the hallway. Easy enough to do. Let's get a little grub in our belly, though. Three of these should do. Beautiful. Okay. They will run away from the fire, and they won't come after me, but this allows me to kill them safely. They will respawn eventually, but until they do, I'll be able to use this as a shortcut to get to the other side of the cave. Yeah, you see that shit? Beautiful. It, it's pretty much free scorpions. Now, in the beginning, they're, they didn't run from fire. Or, no, I have that wrong. When I first played back in March or April, they ran away from fire, but if they ran into you, they would actually climb on you and sting you. That no longer happens. They'll just run right through you and continue running. Which is, you know, <laughs> better than the way it was. Where the fuck did his dead body go? It's like I smacked him into the rock. 
but that's okay. I know there's more scorpions than that. Here you go. I still believe there's even more than that, but it's okay. We won't worry about it for now. There's long sticks over here. I'm going to need a lot of them. It might not be a bad idea to grab more regular sticks as well. And let's kill this prairie dog. We need the grub. Stamina seems to be more of an issue than the last time I played. It seems to be. Oh, he's already... Fleeing. Okay. Let's grab these. Beautiful. Long sticks, they, uh, they go quick. They really do. We don't really have the inventory space for sticks, but we did very well on long sticks. Oh! Yeah, by the way, never underestimate fall damage in this game. That's a terrible idea. It's... Fall damage is very punishing in Fountain of Youth. There, we can take that many. Alright. Now, although you can kill the snake to get it out of the way, uh, it does respawn eventually. It doesn't stick. Uh, okay, it's over there. I don't like that. He's very close. Alright. We're good. Maybe we should kill that turtle now. We have need of the meat anyway. Yeah! Alright. I think he's close to dead now. Son of a... The stamina regeneration is definitely a significant amount slower than it used to be. Okay. We got pretty lucky. Getting the, uh, shell. You don't always get that. Let's walk at home. Ah, oh, I tell you, this game is the perfect antidote. Yeah. Whenever you're stressed, whenever you're just not feeling it. My wife and I, we bought an ounce of weed. But we smoked it all down, you know. I temporarily smoked tobacco for that ounce, now it's gone. And we gotta quit again, so right now I'm just, I'm cold turkey and all of it. It kinda sucks, but you know what? We had fun. And it's better to have fun temporarily than to lose yourself having it all the time. I'm going to need my stone cutter. What the hell is my... Oh, I used it to... Right, right, okay. Yeah, I had used it to craft the spear. That's why I didn't have it anymore. Okay. We're going to want a bone cutter sooner than later. It's much more efficient. No resources to harvest on the tortoise. Okay. We have our next meal sorted. Definitely. So. Allow me to ponder our next priority for a moment. Okay. Alright, I know what we're doing. We need to get a start on rain collectors and canteens, you know, we, we gotta go find some bamboo in order to make ourselves large water canteens, stuff of that sort, so we're gonna get started on all that stuff. We're gonna need these three flasks. And now with these flasks, we can craft coconut rainwater collectors, but the palm juice collector is arguably more important, it's just we need bamboo for that, so let's do the bamboo today. Alright, so what I'd like to do is eat, sleep, and then we have to go on a long trip tomorrow. And we need a new axe as well, actually. Hang on. For that, 
We're gonna actually need more stone. There's a large one out here. Okay. Well, I think it's too dark to craft our axe right now. But it is not too dark to start a fire. Look at that. No injury chance. Oh. Fuckers respawned. Okay. At least that one did. That's why you always need an abundance of medicine. Okay. Now let's cook. Jesse. We have to cook. Beautiful. Alright. We're gonna move our bed, uh, just in case more scorpions respawn. If they do respawn, then they're probably not gonna come get me over here. Alright. Well, it sucks we can't fill our thirst a little. We might have gotten some health back, but let's get some sleep. That should do. We're gonna want to be pretty quick about the stuff we gotta do today. I need bamboo. That's the primary uh, objective right there, is bamboo. Oh, you can, you can repair that? Right, right, yeah, you can repair it like once. Alright. So I'll just deposit this one. We'll repair it, the one that we have first. Or, shit, let's just put the primitive torch there. Repair this guy, and then we have two axes to use while we're out and about. That just means we're getting more bamboo anyway, right? Can't repair a torch. I'd like to have another stone cutter just in case. Inventory is kind of light, you know, we're not that encumbered right now, so we're gonna head there. I might have to drink some coconuts on the way, but whatever, right? So I'm gonna show you guys how to get to the bamboo. I'm not sure if I'll continue to the watering hole quite yet, but I know the geography of this island very well, so, you know, if you keep watching, you'll see all kinds of useful shit. We'll drink two. Pretty soon, we're not going to need coconuts anymore. We're going to have plenty of water that we can just always have access to. And it's even safe to travel to. You only have to travel to those watering holes on the map as long as you don't have rain collectors. Or these guys, palm juice collectors. If you recall, this is where we found the snake potion a while back. From the area with the snake potion, you turn left. That's where we got the skill point. And you head up this hill. That's where you're gonna find some easy bamboo. Where the fuck are you? Oh, there he is. God, the grass. It's so tall, eh? Fuck that clown. The stamina regen is brutal. Okay. Alright, got him. I want to see the new content, man. The content that already exists is so fun. And so consistently engaging. There it is. Bamboo spotted. As you can see, there's a bird circling around there. They're easy enough to kill. If you've done it before. Then you know how. Alright. I have to take care of the prairie dog. And that bird, I think, in order to collect all of this. Alright, that's done. Now for the bird. If we get close to his nest, it's gonna attack us. Here it comes. Got him. One more. Okay. 
Okay. They may have added a red glow when you're supposed to attack. I'll have to test that out a little more. There never used to be that red glow, I don't think, but I believe it may be a signifier that it's time to release your charged attack. Here's the prairie dog. Alright. We have some bamboo to collect, and it's just about to be nighttime, so hopefully we get it all. I'm not disappointed in that. Ah, there it is. Okay. I really want that last piece, you know? I'll take the chance. Alright, we got it. That makes me very happy. Four eggs as well. That's very good food. We're not encumbered yet, so we can grab a whole bunch of the sticks behind us over there. But first, let's check over here. Yeah, there's a cave right here, and there might be a flint in it or something. Although it is very dark. Eh. There it is. A flint shard. Hell yeah. So when I find a second one, we can make a superior fire starter. I would like to grab more of these small stones. We'll do sticks later, I think. Well... That's eh, okay, we don't need to fight him. We had a very productive trip. Let's return home and do with everything we acquired what we can. Oh, there's another flint shard right here. I have never found that flint shard ever. Not not once in my life. What? No, what? No way. Have those been there since, like, the game's release? Have I just been missing those the whole time? Or are they a new edition? I have no idea if they're a new edition or not, but that's... That's fucking incredible, buddy. Anyway, we can't take these stones now, unfortunately. We're gonna have to hoof it like this. We can, however, take seven sticks with us. Alright, let's get home. Oh, and for those of you who want to know, uh, you can get significantly further on the same amount of energy if you walk instead of sprint. So if you ever find yourself extraordinarily tired and you got a long way to hobble home, then just walk. It'll take you longer, but you'll burn less energy getting there. Uh, just so you guys know, I've tried this before. Don't take shortcuts down cliffs. The fall damage is way too punishing in this game. You will end up with wounds, you might even end up dead. I mean, look at my health right now, right? It's very hard to actually get ahead of the game in regards to your health. Now, the best way i found to do it is if you fill up your thirst and hunger and then you drink a snake potion, you can literally just sleep 24 hours and get all your health back. But snake potions are so exceedingly rare that that's not always an option. But I'll get my health back. We are just about to be in a stage of the game where I have a steady and reliable source of food and water. Oh. Well, it took a while to walk back, but we finally returned home. We'll just make a pile of flint on the floor. It is heavy enough to justify that. Maybe right in here. Alright. We can't exactly get health back tonight, but that's gonna start tomorrow, I think. Let's get some sleep, and then get started on constructing what we have to. Survival point obtained. I forgot to mention, you can actually earn survival points just by crafting things for the first time. So we're gonna get a point for making a coconut rainwater collector, we're gonna get a point for palm juice collector, everything. You know, just craft shit and you will unlock some points. Really helps. What do I require for the palm juice collector? I need three ropes and three bamboo sticks. Okay, we can now craft three of those, which is really going to come in handy. It's a fair walk to reach them. I think we set up one juice collector here and then another two down there by those trees. Yes, here we go. Alright, crafting. Palm juice collector. That's all she wrote. 
That's all it takes. This is going to slowly start filling with food and water. We'll grab these coconuts on the way back. There's another. And a final one right over here. I do wish I could have all three of them in the same place, but... It just isn't possible, so... Now, when we return here tomorrow, there's going to be some juice that we can drink that'll give us calories and hydration. Now I'd like to focus on building a rain collector to get that last skill point that I want. Which we can do right away. In fact, we can craft several rain collectors right now with what we've gathered. It is going to kill our supply of ropes, however. Yeah, we're collecting this big rock over here. I'll need it later to make a better stone axe. Alright, home sweet home. We're back. We're going to craft four coconut flasks, and then we're going to turn those flasks into rainwater collectors. Oof, we don't actually have enough ropes, so we're going to have to only do three rain collectors right now. I guess that's all right. Okay. Oh, we just got pretty thirsty. It's not good. We need 12 sticks. Apparently this classifies as a machine. <laughs> That's pretty dope. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a water machine. Okay. We're going to need a hammer. I forgot about that. And I think the most pressing thing right now is that we make sure we have a coconut to drink. Alright. We're good now. We'll survive. Let's drop this large stone. These yellow leaves, I don't even, I don't even care about. I don't think they're useful for anything other than... Wait a sec. Mark a location. Obviously not on the map, right? No, that's just... That's for probably more PvP shit. Uh, let's get this out of the base. Well, not PvP, but, you know, people playing together. We can craft a hammer. Uh, you know that uh, destroyed water collector that we harvested that was right here in the beginning that wasn't always here now you get two big branches for free used to be you had to go down to the snake statue uh sorry the snake potion area and then go further and then swim across the water to an island where there would be a big branch there that you could claim for free now that's not really required anymore all right we're gonna make a well yeah we'll make a stone hammer it is better, faster, and it'll last a longer time. Okay, that's one. Survival point obtained. Let's spend these. I already know what I want. I want concentration and this. This is the real MVP. Highlights poisonous animals in concentration mode so that whenever I press V, poisonous animals will glow and be visible to me. Extraordinarily useful. Okay. I really wish it could rain. <laughs> we are going to start losing health. I heard thunder? Well, I hope so. Let's eat a few mollusks. Just for the hydration. And then we'll also cook these. Eat one. Uh, 
All right. Two percent chance. That's <laughs> wow. All right. Unequip this and destroy it. Craft a new torch. Ah, scorpion might respawn. Let's move over here. Beautiful. Yeah. Alright. Let's put a little bit more fuel in the fire before we extinguish it. I won't have to worry about that later. Okay. I'm doing good on food for now. Maybe we should top up our bandages. Three more steamed leaf bandage. Right. Alright, I can only make two more. With what I have. Okay. Let's extinguish that. Now, the uh, palm juice is being collected as we speak. That's going to be very useful very soon. Let's deposit our hammer. It's way too heavy to just carry around. I'd like to go mapping for the first time. We have one more rope for the purpose of it. And we need charcoal, which means we gotta light that fire again, which makes me feel pretty stupid. Alright. We'll do two. Alright. Clear day today. Maybe we could do it now. A rope tree. We'll harvest that while we're here. We ought to. Alright. I don't know how the fuck this happens. Like, yeah, sure. With one rope, I put this here. You know, <laughs> it's like, it's fucking weird. But, uh, yeah. Apparently it's a thing. Definitely. Alright, let's uh, map this area. Boom. Now we have significantly greater resource knowledge. The branches up there. Yeah, alright, let's get down. We're gonna harvest those ropes and try to get as many wide leaves as we can with the storage capacity we still have remaining. Watch out for snakes, though. Where the fuck are you? Alright. Plenty of wide leaves right here. Whoa. Yeah, that was close. I'll take one of those flowers just to find out what the hell they're for. Wow, the best medication to treat all forms of wounds, eh? Alright. I don't like traipsing around here, but it's good stuff to be found, really. Hello. Hi.
We're getting thirsty, but I think there's fruit trees in this jungle. Let's try to find one. Bread tree right there. It's a really wonderful tree that grows sourdough bread. Let's be careful. I don't need to be envenoming myself for no reason. Ah, son of a bitch. Alright, you got me this time. We're getting low on those venom compressors, though, so... Nice. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. So the bread tree's been harvested. Eucalyptus up there is really useful. Oh my god. Oh, yeah, that's right. Hardcore parkour, motherfucker. Alright. That might be another fruit tree. That acacia. Wouldn't be a bad idea to fill our bellies while we're here. Alright. I think that's just about as many palm leaves as we can carry. Or, you know, banana leaves. Wide leaves. We need that. I would love to be able to carry more, but it's just not uh, not feasible right now. All right, let's get out of here. Slowly, without recklessness, per preferably. Here we go. Look at that. Oh yeah. Ten water each. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, we don't need to worry about feeding ourselves tonight. Let's go get some sleep. You know what? We can actually craft, uh... We're gonna craft some bandages with red gum. Tomorrow. That'll help us to get some health back. Gradually. Nonetheless. Alright, let's get some sleep. And we're gonna craft a... Oh, in order to craft a bamboo flask, we can make two, which is perfect. But we're gonna need cattails. And cattails are not the easiest thing to come by. We're gonna go get some. And I'll be showing you where the first watering hole is. Let's look at Juan Ponce de Leone's map that he illustrated. Right here. Map of the Island of Hope. So, this watering hole, I'm going to show you how to get here. And it's actually a pretty safe passage. Uh, you just have to learn it, right? Navigating that mountain can be a complex experience, but it really just boils down to how many times you've done it. Now, I think bandages, I don't like the fact that we only have one more processed scorpion venom, but we should be fine for this trip. Deposit these eggs. Uh, and just in case it rains, I'd kind of like to finish these before we go. If it rained today, I'd feel pretty stupid having two incomplete rainwater collectors. Okay. Perfect. We might actually just want to fucking sleep till tomorrow again. Where our energy is quite low. So, if I want to look up the bamboo flask, let me see here. Yeah, it, it really doesn't even require rope, so I don't have to bring the rope. Nor do I have to bring that, because there's more bamboo beside that pool of water. Alright, we'll use today to prepare for the expedition. And we'll go tomorrow. We're gonna craft... Two more of those, one more chamomile bandage. Okay, and then we need enough for bandages with red gum.
All right. Hey, we have rainfall. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. All right. Oh, that's a consistent rainfall, too. Okay. Let's uh, fry up these eggs. Yeah, it's just... Oh, come on. All right. Okay, I understand why that happened. Take the... Oh, my God. I got a bad burn from that. See, burns aren't too common, but that's why you need to have tobacco compressors made. Uh, sometimes it's just necessary. Anyway, let's uh, drink some water and get some sleep. We have some food, so we could get some health back here, actually. We'll hang on to these red gum bandages. We will swap these. Pause it. Those. Oh yeah, we're completely fucking exhausted. We can't even move. Alright, there we go. Fully watered. And nearly fully fed. Oh yeah, health regen. So good. Alright, um... I'm going to top off my stats, and I'm also going to take a red gum bandage. And that will help us big time. So, we're going to eat a mollusk. Oh, son of a bitch. I mean, I have vivacity, but... No, I don't have vivacity. Right, I'm not even fully rested. Alright. Well, if I want to top off my food and water, I'm going to need to just eat some raw eggs. Okay. Now... We take the red gum bandage, and that will boost our health gain. Beautiful. We are in a much better place than we were. And now we can get going. Top that off. So there's two ways to get up the mountain. There's uh, one way... Oh, there's multiple ways to get up. A lot of them very dangerous, but there are safe ways to reach the watering hole. I'm gonna ponder for a moment on which way I'd like to go. I know there's one way where if I go that way, I can collect a pickaxe on the way. And I would like to grab that pickaxe, even if it encumbers us slightly on the way back home. So I'm gonna take the pickaxe way. And you can watch me take it and learn that route for yourself if you don't know it already. So this place right here, uh, you know, from the fishing spot, go this way, to the northeast, where the snake is. The snake that always tries to ambush you right here. Where is the motherfucker? Right there. Now, one thing I like to do, gather a shitload of sticks, a shitload, and then build a storage box at the base of the mountain here. It helps a lot. Okay, so we're going to put a box here, right beside the stone pile. Now we have a nice little dump. Always good to take a dump. Anything valuable that we find, every time, we can always bring back there, right? Because often the way that we take to get up is the same way that we take to get down. Grab these. I don't like the wind chill thing, but that's just... You can't really avoid that. Once you start climbing the mountain, you're gonna get wind chill. I don't see a large boulder. Let's check up here. 
There we go. Beautiful. Uh, I don't think there's anything up here. Unless they've added something since I played last. Nope. Alright, so, let's go deposit these. As you can see, we just made a, a great leap forward in the availability of stone. We already have wind chill. If you're quick enough, you can avoid getting wind chill uh, by the time you reach the summit. There's like a cave up there that protects you from the wind chill, but you have to reach that cave before the meter fills up, and it's, it's not easy to do. Anyway, I think we're ready to make our climb. Now, I'm not going to be collecting stones from this point onward. Only because it's of critical importance that I grab as much uh, bamboo as possible. There's also some eucalyptus, maybe some clay. I probably won't collect the clay yet, but... Primary priorities are cattails, bamboo, and eucalyptus. As well as whatever other treasures like this pickaxe I can find on the way. So all you're really doing is... <clears throat> You enter from where I showed you, and you follow the path up, but there are a couple of forks in the path, and you want to make sure you're going the right way. So, you're going to want to climb this, not go that way. So we climb. And this is where you'll find that stone pickaxe, actually. Right there. I don't know why it's there, but it always has been. Da, 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 da. Always has been. We'll take that to repair our axe, at the very least. And this one, just in case we need another repair. Now, once you're at the top, you're going to come to another fork in your path. Instead of going that way, you're going to go this way. And uh, the vines draping down there, that's the cave that you have to reach before your wind chill meter maxes out. Got some scorpions in the path, though. Alright. There's more scorpions in that cave, so you kind of want to be careful that you, you know, avoid them as best as you can. I didn't bring my torch. So... I won't have light to protect me, but that's why I made extra bandages. Lint right there. I'm gonna go around the back and try to avoid them, because there are a couple of things here that I would like to get. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, ouch. Concentration mode highlights valuable items. Alright, so this is a very important thing to grab in the early game. There is a whole ass improved torch right there along with a camp. Alright. That's a stone. And that is a flint. Now, I've known about those flints for a long time. Now we have to backtrack just a touch. valuable shit over there that we gotta see. What's that? What the hell? Ocatillo seeds. Oh yeah, they added a... Uh, they added farming in this update, I think. I haven't seen fuck all about that yet, so... I'll have to explore some new mechanics. Alright. There's one pesky scorpion here that you should take out before you loot the area. Where is that asshole? There's always one. Yeah, right there. Alright, we're good now. Ancient observatory buildings. Hmm. Alright, so there's a few things we're going to want to grab here top, over here, and there's lamp oil, I believe. Bird potion. A 
Only one more survival point, and I'll be able to detect poisonous creatures at will. Alright, so the lamp oil's down here. And up here is the real money. I think. Yeah, right there. Oh my god! Oh, that sucked. That was a bad fall, dude. We won't use a second bandage on that injury yet. Yeah, let's not fuck that up again. That was uh, devastatingly painful. Living water. Look at that, eh? So we just got a massive heal. That's why you need concentration mode. When you press V, it highlights special things that you should collect. Concentration mode should be one of your first unlocks. One of them. Now, if you uh, continue this way past that observatory area, you're going to come to the location where the first watering hole is. It's a massive clay fountain that collects water gradually. And it's reliable. Every time it rains, you can come back here and fill your skins, you know? And we definitely need the eucalyptus for the red gum. Alright, so now that we've made it here, let's consolidate all of the clay into one location. And grab some cattails. Alright, that should do for cattails for pretty much the rest of the game. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Alright. Let's take a quick perimeter check around here. Sometimes clay spawns around the back. A lot of snakes here. You gotta really watch your step when you navigate this place. There's probably five snakes around this area. Now, once, uh, once that's done... There's a prairie dog over there, but also bamboo, as you can see. So we're going to go gather that bamboo, and we're going to try to pop off our inventory with it after we do the smart thing and have a drink. Beautiful. Now, we can craft water canteens up here and uh, take a little bit of water down with us. Free bamboo that I do not have to harvest. I don't like that prairie dog. Okay. Alright. So instead of repairing that, we're just going to destroy it, shed the weight. And we don't need those, but actually we'll repair. Oh, son of a bitch. 3% chance that was. Alright, get rid of those stones just by doing the quick repairs now. Bamboo seeds. Oh, but now it's... It may be dark, but I think we have a way around that. So, we're gonna craft... Oh my god. My injury chance is so high now, with everything. Yeah, I'll even tr get injured if I try to craft that flask. Well, let's grab what we can that's just lying around. There might be more. Alright, that's it. That's enough bamboo for now, I think. Like, I just don't want to risk getting a shitload of injuries, right? So, craft a canteen. So we'll head back now. I'm going to take a different way back than I took to get up here. <sighs> Primarily because I think I can find a few more useful items on the way. Like that. 
Now, that cave right there, there's a cave in front of me. I don't know if you can see it right there. Uh, if you go in there, that's the cave where where we found the improved torch. So it's kind of like a circle up here. In fact, right here is where the skeleton is that you grab the torch from. I think. Yeah. It's him right there. I'm gonna check for a flint in this area real quick. I mean, even if there is one, I'm not likely to see it in this darkness, but... Alright, there's a stone right there. Alright, so now we just descend the hill. And uh, these bushes can cause me some harm, so I'm going to try not to touch them. Alright. When we reach the bottom, we're going to emerge at the location where the first snake potion was that you saw me take. As you can see, this is where we cleaned our first bamboo. Killed the bird, the prairie dog. I remember how fun it was to learn this route the first time I played the game. It was very difficult, man. I make it look easy, sure, but when I first started on the hardest difficulty, this was unimaginably difficult. Like, I I didn't want to Google anything. Even if I did Google something, there was nothing to find because the game was brand new. And I kind of made it a personal challenge to learn as much of this game as I could without Google. That's why so much of it seems like second nature to me. I learned everything on my own. As you can see, that's where we received the snake potion. I killed the prairie dog here. Oh, we got a skill point, didn't we? One. But we'll need one more in order to get concentration level... Well, two more shit in order to get concentration level three. Alright. We can probably unlock those skill points through the crafting of items. Maybe. I'm going to ascend the staircase right now. I know we're getting tired, but we'll be home soon anyway. I need to grab this tablet. Alright. I'm going to walk home. How's it looking? Five out of five juice. I would say our food and water problems are officially over. Sleep for one hour. Alright. No more sprinting. We're gonna have to craft new bandages first thing tomorrow morning. You know what? I'll make three. Tomorrow. Okay. Beautiful. Three bamboo flasks. And we have the medicine. For that flu we're getting. Gorgeous. Okay. Everything just got a whole lot easier. Let's craft more bandages. As you can see, all of our leaves went really fast. They do when you, uh, when you get the ball rolling. Okay, we now have five steamed leaf bandages. Treatment. We're gonna want one more hibiscus. And, uh... I would also like to replace the tobacco compresses that we used, if we have enough. Yeah, we do. Beautiful. We're completely prepared for injuries now. And with these flasks, we can collect everything. We can collect the water from the rain collectors. We can collect the palm juice from the trees over there. We're set. We'll have to repair these soon, in a couple days. 
I'm gonna go fill my uh, bamboo flask. Did I leave the fire on? I might have. Beautiful. We now have 15 palm juice collected. Beautiful. We can really top ourselves off now. By the time that food and water starts running out, we might even have more to harvest from the palm tree collectors. As you've probably already predicted, this game's not as intense as some of the other stuff we've been playing, but you know what? It fits the criteria. It's permadeath, there's threats around every corner, there's new stuff I have to see now that might catch me off guard and kill me, right? Good stuff. Yeah, it's different, but it ain't bad. Okay. May as well sleep for as long as we'll get health back. Alright. Okay guys, I think I'm gonna call this episode here. I uh, got a lot of good footage, and our adventure is going very well. We have a lot of long sticks, a lot of bamboo, we still have one more big branch, but we've mapped big branch trees to the north, so we can actually get more of those anytime we want. Whole bunch of flint. We're going to need more narrow leaves, we're going to need more wide leaves, but we have our rain collectors, we have our palm juice collectors, and I would say that things are going very smoothly. And with that said, it's time to end this one here. So thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoy it as much as I'll inevitably enjoy editing it, making it, playing it. I hope that... Um, I hope that you tune in for the next one. I hope that you buy this game for yourself. I hope that you have wonderful adventures of your own and that every step of the way you challenge yourself. Don't go below the hardest settings. There's no point. Why get used to the weaker when you can acclimate to the stronger, right? Anyway, thank you very much for watching, guys. Peace out, rock on, and take care. And don't forget to check the pinned comment down below for the word of the day in a health cookie. Alright, see you in the next one. Peace!